It's no secret that Intelligent Systems likes to leave us salivating Fire Emblem nerds in the dark for extended periods of time while they scheme away at their next devious plan. But that won't stop the cogs in our heads from tossing and turning like newly married couples in their beds as we hypothesize and overanalyze what will or will not be the next big step for our beloved franchise. So after some late night thought and a YouTube poll asking you guys what you think about the matter, I came up with a list of sorts as to what I think are the most likely options that we are going to see. But before I begin, I wanted to make a quick announcement. I know this isn't Fire Emblem related, but I will be streaming Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition starting Friday afternoon, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a gander at the general Fire Emblem release timeline. I'll be using the Japanese release years because that is more true to development time overall. As we can see, Intelligent Systems has been fairly consistent with the release of Fire Emblem games, with the longest period we've gone without a game release being about three years. We're almost a year out of Three Houses release at this point, which means they have to have started looking at what their next game is going to be. Why do I say that? Well, there was this little teaser at the start of 2017 of Fire Emblem Switch that ended up becoming Fire Emblem Three Houses over two and a half years later. So with that, let's start with the first game on my list, and the most voted for by you guys as well, Genealogy of the Holy War. This one is naturally the most controversial one, so I'm gonna have a lot to say here. It's no secret that I love this game. It's my favorite video game of all time. The characters and the storytelling make for such a compelling and immersive adventure, disguised under the title of a strategy RPG that you have to actively try really hard to nitpick away at the minor things in order to hate this game. The dark and mature themes that it brings to the table help establish a sense of realism, but also really effective writing. But as I say this, I acknowledge that this might actually be the main problem with remaking this game. You see, what was deemed acceptable in gaming in 1996 is unfortunately now looked down upon and berated by the masses of thin-skinned Twitter gamers who would cancel Nintendo at the slightest whiff of an incest reference. People would take no account into the world building and the lore that has to take place to set up such a tragic scenario in the first place, and would only look at all the superficial stuff. A demonic cult, kids being hunted down and sacrificed to a dark god, and incest would probably be a PR nightmare for Nintendo and Intelligent Systems upon release, and that may even cause the game to be pushed to a mature rating. Personally, having played this game many times and analyzed it to death's door and back, these themes are not as in your face as one would think from what they see on the internet. There is no actual mention of incest in the story at all, and it's up to the player to put two and two together to figure this out on their own. I have no defense for child killings though, other than it being a game and not reality, but sadly, I don't work for intelligent systems, and all four times I sent them my CV by email, they never replied to me. So my opinion probably doesn't matter to them. Aside from story aspects, however, lies an inherent hatred among some players for the way genealogy operates in terms of its gameplay. Big maps, I know. If I had a penny for every time I heard someone complaining about the map size, I'd be running the world at this point. Fire Emblem 4 isn't designed for you to sit down and play a map all in one sitting. It's designed for you to tackle them castle by castle per objective, and for you to take breaks in between. If you feel like you're traversing never-ending stretches of land and spending too much time moving your units, that's because you're either playing the Newbie Killer Chapter 2, or you've been playing the game for three hours straight and you need a breather. If they were to revise the size of the maps, they could, however, break it down into smaller chapters, with each castle being one on its own to give you an illusion that it's smaller but you will end up sacrificing some of the events that happen in the far corners of the map at the same time, which contribute to the world building. The story is happening around you, and you're part of it, so why not just embrace it? Needless to say, I do think they'll speed up enemy movement speeds and general quality of life things like that, so at least your wait times for enemy phase will be slightly lower if this does get a remake. I will stand by the fact that it probably has one of the deepest and most diverse set of gameplay features that a Fire Emblem game has. Its main hub at the start is peak levels of army management, and the marriage and inheritance system allows for some truly unique customization options for your second generation. This game was revolutionary for its time. 
The way the trading system works might not be everyone's cup of tea, but it teaches you how to manage your items and strategically get your kills so that resources are distributed across your teams. But I'll concede that maybe some revisions in the trade system such as some on-map trading or allowing more lenience in item transfer between couples wouldn't be a bad idea. I totally think this is a feasible remake option, and would remain so even if they stayed faithful to the original. I think the addition of things like updated UI, art, voice acting, and general gameplay smoothing and quality of life would work wonders for this almost 25 year old game. But if they're going to bastardize, censor, cut things, and change the story, I'd rather not see a remake at all. Whew, okay, that was a long winded analysis, but I had to get that off my chest. Let's go with a safe pick next. Fire Emblem 6, The Binding Blade. Let's be real here. A lot of us got introduced to Fire Emblem with Marth and Roy being in Smash. All the other flagship Fire Emblem characters that are in Smash have had their games localized or remade in the West, except Roy. He continues to be an extremely popular character these days, which is shown by him winning the very first Choose Your Legends event in Fire Emblem Heroes back in 2017, as well as the fact that he was a launch featured Raid Up Unit 2. Intelligent Systems knows that this boy Roy is popular, and popular means sales. And what business would pass up on an opportunity like this? In terms of the mechanical aspect of a remake of this game, I don't really know if there's anything not to like. Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem games have some of the most robust gameplay in the series in terms of the way they're designed. They're simple, they don't have skills or skill inheritance, outside of Sacred Stones featuring skills on some promoted classes, but they have some interestingly designed maps, and the best thing is the animations. Look, I'm gonna go on the record here and say, if they remake this, and they change my beloved Game Boy Advance animations, I will be mad. I understand we don't live in a 2D Fire Emblem world anymore, but the Game Boy Advance animations are the best Fire Emblem animations ever made. Don't believe me? Go watch a Critical Hit compilation. Their over-the-top nature oozes with personality that is befitting of each class, and they're downright badass and sometimes cheeky. The story and characters here are overall rather likable, and aside from a few touch-ups in terms of fleshing out some parts of the story, I think it stands up pretty well in the grand scheme of things. Fire Emblem 6 with a fresh coat of paint doesn't sound too bad to me. Oh wait, here's an idea. What if they went all out and tried to combine it with FE7 in the same game for one massive epic project to tell a big story? Nah, I'm just messing with you guys. I know this topic has been widely discussed to death, and while I do think it could work, they'll never do it. Why? It's simple. They'd rather sell you two $60 games than one. And boy oh boy does the world of Alib sell, so yeah, just look at Fey Pass. At the end of the day, I'd be happy with a Fire Emblem 6 remake. And I do personally think that this is the one that makes the most sense, and is the most likely. But then again, intelligent systems can be known for not making sense sometimes. Which brings me to the last game on the list. Path of Radiance. Ike is another character who won the first Choose Your Legends character poll in Fire Emblem Heroes, and is even more popular than Roy, so this is yet another no-brainer on the list. However, unlike the two entries before it, Path of Radiance is an incomplete game on its own. Well, let me clarify that. The narrative of Path of Radiance is incomplete on its own. And what I mean by that is, with a remake of this, Intelligent Systems will basically have to commit themselves to remaking Radiant Dawn right after it. Just like they did with Shadow Dragon and New Mystery of the Emblem back in 2008 and 2010. Going through with this certainly isn't impossible, and I would be more than happy to see both Telius games remade as I think Radiant Dawn is actually one of the three strongest games in the series for what it does in terms of story. But let's look at it from a different perspective. The Nintendo Switch released in spring of 2017. And at the time of making this video, we are over three years into its lifespan. If we go by previous calculations in this video, we would need about two or three years for a new Fire Emblem game to be released. Due to these both being remakes, I'll go with a lower estimate here of two years. This means that at best, we see Path of Radiance in 2021 and Radiant Dawn in 2023. I'm sure you can all see where I'm going with this, but by that time, the Switch will most likely be nearing the end of its lifetime and they will have to commit to never again releasing another mainline Fire Emblem game on this extremely popular console. To me, this seems like a business risk, considering that remakes never sell as well as new mainline games, and the last time we saw two back-to-back -back remakes made, 
it almost resulted in the death of Fire Emblem as we know it. Granted, that was then, and this is now, where Fire Emblem is more popular than ever and the Tellius games are strong entries that anyone can pick up, play, and enjoy. So maybe they could change the narrative. And IS could always just say, hey, we're gonna release Path of Radiance and leave you guys hanging while we do another main game afterwards to squeeze out that last bit of Switch relevance. We can just wait to get Radiant Dawn on the Nintendo Fly or whatever they decide to call the next contraption they make. Anyways, that's my ramble and my thoughts regarding some of the more popular picks for remakes in the Fire Emblem series. Make sure you let me know what you think in the comments below and keep an eye out for my streams over the next week or two. I'd actually love to see everyone there and get a chance to interact with you guys more directly. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you are in the world, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.